succeeded in breaking asunder the chains of bondage. All the disparate people that make up this country now called Ghana will come together on the 6th of March 2007 to celebrate the 50th anniversary of Ghanaian independence from British rule. But as we struggle against the confines of being a once colonised people, I wonder about the success of our hopes and aspirations for the future, when there is little knowledge of who we were before this period of occupation. I want to know how my people, the Asante, lost our freedom in the first place. This is the little-known story of the Golden Chair of Asante and Queen Nana Ya Santua I, a 60-year-old grandmother who became Commander-in-Chief of the Asante Army that fought in the Sixth and Final War against British rule. Here in Ghana, we have a golden stream, pure gold. It was not manufactured, it was conjured from the sky by a local priest called Antonoti, a spiritual golden stream. This golden stream unites all the Ashanti kingdom. If you move it, trouble. In 1895, the paramount king of the Asante sent a delegation to London to negotiate a treaty of friendship. While they were still there, Sir Francis Scott and Major Baden-Powell invaded Asante and burnt it down. They arrested the paramount king, Prempe I, his family and many senior kings. Eventually they were all deported to the Seychelles. One of the deported was the young king of Ejusso. Afrani II. His grandmother, Nanaya Santua I, became the sole monarch of the province of Idrissel. The British governor at the time, Sir William Maxwell, wanted something else from the Asante, the golden stool. They put resources together, manufacture a fake one for him. He was very happy and took it to Britain. When he got there, he realized that that was not the original golden stool. He got annoyed, came back. On the 28th of March 1900, the new British governor, Sir Frederick Hodgson, called all the kings and queens of Ashanti to a meeting at the British fort in Kumasi. Then there is the matter of the golden chair of Ashanti. Why have you not made use of my visit to Kumasi to bring me the golden chair to sit upon? I am the representative of the greatest power, Her Majesty the Queen of England and Ireland, the Empress of India. You must be aware that although the golden chair is still in your custody, Her Majesty's government will rule over you with the same impartiality and fairness as if you had produced it. However, my troops will search for it until they find it. Yapai and Fanko. 
as 200 British soldiers marched towards the caves and mountains of Barikesi. Yasantua met with a small group of loyal kings and queens.